here we are in this nature spot with the dog. <laughs> I haven't done a video for a long time and there's a few different reasons for that but it's just been finding my alignment and I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about alignment. I saw a friend's Facebook post the other day and they were saying about choosing your shadows or choosing your light. And I remembered that that had been a real big theme for me over the past four years, specifically within relationships. Because within a relationship, there can come those moments where we can choose to stand in the light and to be the light. Or we can choose to come from more the ego, the darkness, the destructive part. And I have many, many repetitions of going through those dark moments of feeling triggered emotionally, my partner feeling triggered emotionally. And both of us being responsible for initiating at different times and then the other one feeding off of that initiation and returning the favor <laughs> and yeah it's destructive when we choose the darkness it does indeed become a case often of the relationship being damaged it doesn't take much to realize that whether it's verbal abuse emotional abuse and even physical abuse all three of those types of abuse cause damage to the connection they can break trust they break emotional security And so when it comes to choosing our light and dark, I feel for many of us to actually realize the importance of why it's good to choose the light. We often have to choose the darkness. We have to go into that contraction in order for us to then be able to expand into the light. So it's one thing to say about it. Do you choose your darkness or do you choose your light? But in my own experience, I had to garner some wisdom through action. And that was how I managed to come to this point now. And of course, I'm not saying I'm perfect. No, in, because Anybody with an ego can have free will to choose light or dark and that can create not so much perfection, perfection is not, or imperfection. Perhaps that's not really the right term to use. But realizing that there is a way to do things. When enough words are said, when enough actions are taken, all of which mostly destructive towards the connection, You learn a few things about what you want and what you don't want. How you want to show up in a relationship and how you wish for your person to show up in relationship as well with you. And really, what's it gonna take to learn that? Some people, inherently, naturally, environmentally, are not very abusive at all at all than others depending on the past circumstances environmental their inherent souls vibration personality they can be very abusive so choosing your light and your dark
For me, it came through wisdom. And even now, I know, that after going through the past four years of relationships, I've been able to get very clear on what I do and don't want within myself and within the kind of connection that I'm looking for. And of course, there comes with no real expectations, but at the same time, I also love myself enough and I also expect my partner to love themselves enough to be able to realize when things are not going in a harmonious, loving way that is supportive and expansive for the most part. But of course, every relationship will have its challenges. Every relationship will have its points of contraction, its points of challenge and <laughs> weathering the storm. And then it really comes down to how much do you love yourself to be able to weather the storm with this person? How much love do you have for this person? So, choosing light and dark. Many of us will have to dabble in both to realize which one we prefer. To realize how much we can damage ourselves and another person inside of a relationship before we realize how important it is to choose the light, to come from the heart as much as we can. Even in those moments when We have a strong emotional charge within us. We're incredibly triggered in some way. And we then have a choice. We can either allow that emotion to express itself in a way that's projecting onto the other, in a way of blaming, in a way of taking the responsibility away from ourselves and what we're feeling. In some cases, of course, that's not always relevant and how much do we have to go through how much pain do we have to endure how much destruction do we need to put upon our relationships that, that can often lead to separation to then realize i really love this person and i wish i could do things differently and so we go away we work on these emotional triggers that have been coming up for us that really only had an opportunity to come up within an intimate romantic relationship because there really is nothing quite else that can trigger us quite to that depth. And so we go away and we work on ourselves. We bring love, lots of strong love to those emotions that we're feeling to wash them, make them, make them clear, to transmute them. And then we can decide, well, I've got rid of that emotional charge. And I also realize the importance of not projecting my pain onto my partner. I'm realizing the importance of when I am feeling emotionally triggered that one of the best things I can do is remove myself from the situation to go cool off to go process what I'm feeling and to take ultimate responsibility for how I am feeling and of course that's easier said than done a lot of the time we can have all the theory in the world. We can have many experiences where we've repeated the same, the same destructive behavior in a cycle over and over again. And we still can have then the best intentions not to do it again and to clear a lot of that emotional debris away to then only find ourselves 
in a synchronistic situation where we <laughs> where we end up choosing for whatever reason to come from that place of ego to come from that wounded inner child that just wants to let the other person feel how we're feeling inside so that they can feel our pain too so that we can share that pain with them even if that's ultimately one of the most unhealthy toxic and destructive things that we could possibly do for our relationship so practice does indeed make perfect Choosing the darkness, choosing the light. What will you choose? And what do you choose? What have you chosen? And I suppose most importantly though, most importantly of all, what do you want to experience in your life and in your relationships? Thanks for watching. Much love to you all. Bye.